everyone, it's Narelle here. In this video I'm going to show you how to create knockout text in Shortcuts A Lot version 5. First thing I need to do is go over to the left here and click on the Type tool. And then I'm going to go over to my list of fonts and I'm going to select the font called Impact. So I'll click on that uh, down arrow there and go and select Impact. And then I'm going to click onto the mat and type my first word. So I'm typing the word create all in uppercase. So then I'm going to go and click on the selection tool, which gives me my selection arrows. I'm holding down the shift key on my keypad and I'm going to drag this bottom right um, handle and just make my text a bit larger. Now if you want to change the spacing in between your letters, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. So the first way is to go over to this um, screen here. So in the same box where, the, where I changed my text, uh, or changed my font, I can go over to this option here called Tracking. And if I click on the down arrow on that, it's going to change the spacing in between my letters. Now it changes the spacing between all of the letters and I don't actually want that so I'm going to put that back to 100% and then I'm going to go up to the object menu and I'm going to select ungroup and now I have six individual letters that I can change the spacing or I can move individually so I'm going to just quickly move some of these a little bit closer you don't have to do this step obviously if you're happy with the way that the text looks when you type it, by all means you just leave that. Now, but regardless of whether you are changing the spacing on this text or not, you still need to do um, this next step which is path union and that's going to um, basically weld our letters and that holds those letters in place and it will export them as a single layer instead of as six individual layers. So I'm going to select all of those letters there. I'm going to go up to the path menu and I'm going to select union. So that's that first word done. So now I'll go and create the rest of my text. So again, I go to the type tool, go over and select my font. Now this time I'm going to be selecting a font called I Love Glitter. So it happens to be just above impact. So I'll click on that one. Now. I love Glitter as a really cool font because it has some um, extra characters and, and swooshes and things like that um, that you can use but you don't need to um, use a character map to do that. You just, you just use those extra characters by um, certain keys on your keypad. So I'll show you how to do that. So the first key that I'm going to uh, do is the open square bracket. So I'm going to click on my mat, I'll press the open square um, bracket and that gives me this swoosh. So now I'm going to type my next couple, uh, my next word. So I'm turning my caps lock off because I want it all in lowercase. I'm typing something and then oh, I'll put a space there so I'll get rid of that. So I've got something. Now I want an uh, open heart in between these two. So I Love Glitter has two types of hearts. You have an open heart and a closed heart. So to get the open heart, we're going to go shift underscore and then I'm going to type my next word which is the word beautiful and then I'm going to do the closing square bracket and that gives me my closing swoosh. So that's my text there done. Now like I did for the word create, I'm going to select all of this text. I'm going to click on my selection tool and I'm going to just resize that roughly. I'm, I won't, I'll finish the resizing a little, a uh, little bit later. But I'm just going to hold down the shift key and just resize that. And then I'm going to go up to the path menu and select union. So both of my words or both my, both of my bits of text have now been welded. So they, when they go into Design Space. So if I took this into Design Space now, they would cut out exactly as you see them. They, or, uh, the letters in the Something Beautiful would all be joined together and they will cut as one individual um, you know, piece of text and they won't cut individual letters. The Create will still cut as individual letters, but that's simply because they're not touching. Okay, so on to our next step. 
So what I'm first going to do, just so you can see this a little bit more clearly, is I'm going to change the colour of this something beautiful text. So I go over to the right hand side here, click on the third icon which is the colour panel, then click on this dot here and I can go and select a different colour from the from the colour picker. So I think I'll just go with the red this time and then I'm going to go and click OK. Now I'll move this back up over the create word so that I can just make sure that I've got my sizing right. So I think I'll make it just a little bit smaller. Uh, so I hold down shift and just drag that in and that gives me that um, smaller text there. So I don't have to worry about positioning it at this stage. So I don't need to do that until I've created my shadow. But that's like the next step. So I'm going to move that back down below the word create and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better when we create the shadow. So I've got that uh, something beautiful selected. So now I'm going to go up to the effects menu and I'm going to go about two thirds of the way down and select this shadow layer contour cut. So that has created a shadow form for me and you can see just inside there you can see my original text. So that still exists, it hasn't deleted it, it's still there and then my other red shadow is currently sitting underneath. So I can go and change the colour of that so that you can see that better. So I'll go and change that to green and click OK. So now you can see my shadow a little bit clear, more clearer. Now there's one other thing that, or a couple of things here we can do. Now we can change the size of that shadow by clicking um, the arrows here in this box here. So Obviously if I click up it's going to give me a bigger shadow. If I click down it will reduce that again. I can also change the size by using this size slider here. So I get the, exactly the same kind of um, thing happening there. So I think I'll leave it at about that size. And there's only one other thing that I want to do here. And I want to get rid of this little um, blanks or this clear space inside the T and the H. And, the, and it's very easy to do that here. I just go up to this option here and select Blackout Shadow and that will get rid of that. So I'll turn, turn that back off so you can see what's happened. So I had, one, I had one here and then one after this T here. So I'll go and turn the Blackout Shadow back on and they disappear. So now that I've done that, I'm going to select OK and there's my shadow. Then I can just grab this top layer and move that down out of the way and you can see my something beautiful shadow. Now I'll just zoom back down slightly so we can see the full screen. So now I'm going to move the shadow up over the word create and this is where I'm going to position it and I'll change and I'll fix it, finalize the size that I want this. Now at the moment it's gone to the back, it's gone behind create. So the, a very easy way to move that is to go down to your layers panel over here on the bottom right. Um, click down on that layer and at the moment it's highlighted, it's the shadow layer. And I'm just going to click down on that and then just drag it up and move it up over the word union. And that word union is um, my other text here. So you, can, you do have a little bit of a preview of what your layers look like. It's quite small, but you should be able to work out what it is. So now I've got my uh, shadow layer here on top. I need to work out where I want to put that. So the other thing that you, you want to do is if you want to change the size, you need to make sure that you change this layer and this layer at the same time. So to do that, you would select them both. And to do that, I click on one and then hold down the shift key and click on the other one and it selects them both. So now when I resize them, they'll both re they'll, they'll, they'll resize at the same time. So um, I'll just do that a little bit so you can see that that is happening and both are changing size at the same time. Okay, so now I'll deselect that by clicking on the mat. And I just want to work out where I want to put this shadow layer. So I'm going to first of all center that and see how that looks. So I'll select both of those layers and then I'm going to go up to Object. 
I'm going to go to Alignment and then I'm going to go Align Horizontal Center. So that's just moved the word Create over slightly and it just means that the Create is now centered um, within the boundaries of my larger um, text there. So if that's where you want that, that's great. Now if you want to move that up and down, you can do that just with the keys on your keypad. You can use that you can use the mouse and drag that up, whatever works for you. So I think that um, as it's sitting there at the moment, I'm happy with. So that's what I'm going to go with. So now I'm going to select both of those and we're going to cut one into the other. So to do that we go up to path and we select back minus front. So now my green layer has disappeared and it has cut into the word create and that is what you call knockout text. So now I'll go and move my original one up here so that you can see what that's going to look like and there's my something beautiful knockout text. Now the next step obviously is going to be moving this or exporting this into Design Space. So we will select both of those and I'm going to go File and then I'm going to go Export. I've got to give this a name so I'll call this Knockout Text in Scal and remember I have to make a note of where I'm saving this so I don't forget where it is when I go to upload it into Design Space. I click Save and then I have my um, export options here. So the first one and the most important one for Design Space users is that you select Design Space Compatible and that means that it's going to export at the correct resolution to take it into Design Space so that it's the correct size when it gets in there. So whatever size I've got selected here, um, which at the moment is 10, uh, 10 inches 0 0.049, when I export that into Design Space, it's going to go in at, at exactly that size. So if I don't turn Design Space compatible on, it won't go in at the right size. So just make sure for Design Space users, you always uh, select Design Space compatible. The other thing that I'm going to select here is this selection only. Um, option. Now I didn't have to um, select this, um, these two layers on that mat because they're the only things that I had on there. Um, but if I had had uh, lots of other um, you know, bits and pieces left on there, text from other designs or you know, images of, of other designs, but I only wanted to export this, I can drag around it like I did and then I can click selection only. So that's what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's saved it as an SVG. It doesn't, you don't get a pop up to say that it's saved as an SVG, but it has. And now you're ready to go and move that into Design Space. So I'll go over to Design Space. I'm going to click the Upload button. And then I'm going to click Upload Image, then Browse. And I'm going to go and find what I, uh, the file that I just created, which was this one here. So I'll click on that and that will bring that into the upload screen here. So I don't need to do anything else to this. You can see the blue uh, blue and white checkered background. That means it's um, transparent um, so I don't have to clean it up at all. So all I need to do now is go to the bottom right here and click Save. And that's going to show that in my list of uploaded images. So I'll click on that one, go down to Insert Images, and that's going to place that onto my Design Space canvas. So there it is. So you can see here in the size, it's 10.049, exactly the same size as it was back in um, Shortcuts a lot. So there it is. It's all ready to go and cut. There's nothing that you need to do there. You can ungroup that if you want to, if you wanted to move um, the something uh, down for some reason. You can also go and change the colour of, of uh, any of your layers if you want to. Rem remember it's the colour that you see on the screen is, on, is, is only an indication of what it looks like to you. Um, 
it'll be whatever colour vinyl or cardstock or whatever that you cut it out on. But if it's easier for you to colour code your images so that you know that this is the layer that's going to be cut out on a certain colour, you can definitely go ahead and do that. So I can easily go and click on the um, this something beautiful layer. I just go over to my layers panel here, click on that layer there. It's still grouped. I don't have to ungroup to do this. I just click on that layer. Now go over to where the line type function is now. So I click on here and right beside that is the little color dot. So I click on that and then I can go and select whatever color I want there. So I'll just change that to yellow and then click off there. And now my uh, something beautiful layer is uh, yellow. So all I need to do is go to the make it button and there's my first layer and then my create layer. So we'll just cancel there. So that's how you do knockout text in shortcuts a lot. Um, as I said, I was using version 5. You can do the same process in version 4. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, this is uh, one of three videos that I've done to show how to create knockout text. Uh, Shortcuts a lot is by far the easiest of the three options. The other two options were Inkscape and uh, the other third option was creating it in um, Design Space itself. Uh, it's the longest and most complicated way. Inkscape's a little bit easier than that, um, but again, Shortcuts a lot is the easiest by far of the three methods. So hopefully this was helpful. Please check out the other videos so you can see which one's going to work best for you. And I would love it if you would give this a thumbs up and come and uh, check out any of my other videos when you get a chance. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.